I'm Rob from Smartburn Innovations. In this video, we'll be installing a custom integration I've developed specifically for our smart boat to seamlessly integrate marine instruments. Typically, boats feature two types of instrumentation networks, the 0183 and the 2000 networks. The older 0183 network is essentially a simple serial network based on either the RS232 or 422 standards. On the other hand, the 2000 network is a more contemporary system built on the CAN bus, similar to what's present in modern cars. Although these technologies play a crucial role in the marine sector, they are commonly found in many everyday applications outside of it. I've developed an integration called Smart 0183, which automatically generates and populates entities in Home Assistant based on the instrumentation data from the 0183 network. To set up 0183, you'll need to connect the 0183 network to our Raspberry Pi using a serial to USB adapter. For those with a 2000 network, a commercial NMEA 2000 to 0183 adapter is available. However, given the high pricing in the marine industry, these adapters can be quite costly. I'm also in the process of developing a Smart 2000 in integration. This will enable you to connect your 2000 network at a much more affordable price point, ranging from $10 to $50. To make use of my Smart 0183 integration, ensure you've already installed the Home Assistant Community Store, known as Hacks. If you haven't installed Hacks, no worries. I've created a dedicated video guide to walk you through its swift and straightforward installation. After the Smart 0183 integration sets up the entities, you can create a dashboard to display them as gauges. You can also use this entity data for monitors and alerts to stay informed and proactive. So let's get started. Here we have our Raspberry Pi. On the back, there are four USB ports, and we can use any of these to plug in our USB to serial cable. It doesn't have to be the high speed one. So here's a USB to serial cable, which is an RS232 type. So we can plug that into any of the ports. Now we're going to use this with the 0183 network cable, which has three wires. So it's the RS232 type. So here we have a RS232 plug. It's a blank plug, so we can open it up, and inside there are screw terminals. So we're going to connect the transmit, which is the positive wire from our 0183 network cable. We're going to connect that to the number two pin. So number two pin is, is receive, and this red wire is the transmit. And the other cable is the black, which is the ground from your network cable. We're going to connect that to pin number five. Tie it up, put it all together. Just connect the two, and we have the RS232 connected up and ready. Now, if you have an RS422 uh, cable, I don't have one here to demonstrate, so I have to talk it through one of the pictures. You need to have a RS422 to USB adapter. Now, here I have a photo of the example. It has two transmit and two receive terminals and a ground. So what you need to do is identify the two transmit wires in your RS422 cable and connect that to the, the receive terminals here, to the receive plus and receive minus. So the transmit plus goes to the receive plus and the transit minus goes to the receive minus. And you, as this is a listener, you don't connect the ground. If you like to connect a 2000 network to my Smart 0183, you'll need to use a commercial 2000 to 0183 converter. So one end of the converter will plug into your 2000 network backbone. And the other end, if it has a USB plug, it will plug straight into our Raspberry Pi. Otherwise, you'll have a cable with four bare wires. And then you have to follow the instructions I provided earlier to use the RS422 plug and then the 422 to USB adapter. So here we are in Home Assistant. First, we need to go to Terminal. We need to check the, the which USB port is going to be assigned when we plug in the USB to the serial cable. So firstly, without the cable plugged in, we need to run a command. Uh, it's ls slash dev, but I, to make it easier, I've put it onto my web page. 
go there to the home page down to code scroll down to miscellaneous commands and then there's this the, the bottom of this command here the ls slash dev pipe the grep usb so copy that and go back and paste it into terminal remember paste in terminal is control shift b so it's control uppercase b and this will display which usb devices are attached to the raspberry pi and since we haven't plugged ours in it should should come up with none or you might have some others already plugged in there so now let's go ahead and plug the usb cable in from the serial to usb and turn on our instruments and just wait say 30 seconds so let the system identify that the cable is plugged in i'll speed it up and then run the command again and see here we go it's identified that tty usb zero this is this is pretty much the default first device that's ever ever allocated now let's go back to my my website and copy this command we're going to install a little app called minicom so we can then look at the data that's coming into this via the usb device this will install this command minicom so done let's go back and copy this minicom command and it's, it's going to look at the device tty usb zeros which is what we found and minus b 4800 it's saying the board rate or the speed is 4800 which is the normal default for for 0183 networks and if all goes well you should have data coming out like this uh, if it's scrambled and unreadable, then probably your board rate is different. So it might be 9600, or if it's AIS data, it's 8400. So you might have to change that around. Now here you do a control A and then X to stop it all. And once it's stopped, just, just maybe take a screen print of the, the data so you can actually see what type of data you're getting. Uh, the first word is the, uh, the, the sentence IDs of the, the 0183 data. We can use them later. I mean, you don't need to, but it's just it's nice to know. And you can see they just repeat after a while. And then when you're ready, just put, type in Y. Now go to Hacks, to Integrations. And this is where we're going to install up the three dots, Custom Repositories. I need to go back to my web page and if you go back to the, the code code page and scroll down there's a smart 01183 uh, page there and at the top here it says it gives you the URL for the github repository so go there and then just copy copy the, the URL at the very top here and we have to use that and then we're going to paste it into the custom repository here and then for category, we have to select, it's an integration. So that's a smart 013, it's an integration. And then we add this custom repository to, to hacks. Okay, so it's now it's added, then just exit from the screen. And then it says there's new depository, it hasn't actually downloaded, so you have to click on this, click on the new depository in the smart. It'll come up with a, a readme page from the, the GitHub, which is, shows you it's the it's the right one and then the bottom right hand corner is the download it says this will download and then press the download button okay, it's downloaded it goes very fast but it's not very really large so it says it's pending restart so when you do a new installation of integration you need to restart home assistant so we go settings restart home assistant Okay, it's restarting. I'll just speed this up. Okay, so it's it's started. So we can just go back to hacks, make sure it's there. Yes, it's, you can see it's it's got any red colors. It looks like it's fine. Status. So to use this integration, we actually have to configure it. So we need to go to the Studio Codec server, and there's a configuration YAML file. It's like the main configuration file for Home Assistant. And if you go to the very end of that, there's some configuration YAML we need to put there. So back to my website, down to the code page, back to the smart 013 page. I need to copy this whole stanza, this whole sensor stanza. And then paste it. 
into the configuration. It's just Control V here, and back to normal. Now, so this defines that's using the, the platform, the integration Smart 0183. The serial port is the one we we checked it was the TTY USB zero, and it's 4800 is the speed. Now, if you have other instruments, you can actually connect them like this. You can say it's TTY USB one, USB two, and you can put different board rates under the same sensor. So you can have multiple, multiple inputs. But for this demo, we're just going to uh, just use the one USB zero. So then save, save the configuration, the YAML. So we've got a developer tools. It's nice to check here. You can actually do a restart, but check the configuration first that there's no errors or typos. And then we'll have to restart Home Assistant to make the changes in our configuration, the YAML valid. So again, it's restarting, I'll speed it up. So if we scroll down to settings, and then devices and services, and then entities, and let's see if we can find the entities that were created by the Smart 013 integration. So let's search for 013 entities, and it will show all the entities that were created. So you can see them down here. There's quite a few. Let's create them based on the data it's, it's seen coming in from the network. So let's have a look at one, one of these, the heading degrees. So it has a, some sort of meaningful name and then SID means sentence ID and HDM is the sentence name and one is the field number. So it's the field number one and HDM. So back on my webpage, if you don't add the code in the Smart013, there's a link to a really good resource on the internet, which gives a description of all the sentence IDs and the fields. So if you scroll down here on the left, Let's find HDM. There we go, HDM. There's the, there's the sentence HDM. It's got two fields. Uh, and it has a description of what, what HDM means. It's heading magnetic. So let's go to a dashboard. Let's create, add this, add a few of these entities to a dashboard. Search for HDM. HDM number one. Give it a name, heading Magnetic, save. Let's create another one. Put an entity. Let's create for the depth one, DBT. DPT, the field number three is the depth in meters. Let's click save. And then done. So here we added a, a couple of the entities. You can add as many as you like, and you can make them really pretty with gauges and colors. You might not want to add all the entities to the dashboard, only the ones you want to see or, or work with. Uh, you can also then go off and create automations or alerts and monitoring based on any of the entities that, that have been brought in. And if you later on add some more instruments to your 0183 network, this integration will automatically detect those instruments and create entities for them in Home Assistant. Thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you hit the like button below. And if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology, consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.